Hi, thank you for joining me. We've been studying A Course in Miracles, and today is lesson number 12 from the student handbook, workbook. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. The importance of this idea lies in the fact that it contains a correction for a major perceptual distortion. You think that what upsets you is a frightening world or a sad world or a violent world or an insane world. Yet all of these attributes are given it by you. The world itself is meaningless in itself. These exercises are done with eyes open. Look around you, this time quite slowly. Try to pace yourself so that the slow shifting of your gaze from one thing to another involves a fairly constant time interval. Do not allow the time of the shift to become markedly longer or shorter, but try instead to keep a measured, even tempo throughout. What you should see, what you see does not matter. You teach yourself this as you give, your, give whatever your glance rests upon an equal attention of time. This is a beginning step in learning to give them all equal value. As you look about yourself, say, I think I see a fearful world, a dangerous world. I think I see a hostile world. I think I see a sad world. I think I see a wicked world. I think I see a crazy world. And so on, using whatever descriptive items happen to occur to you. If terms which seem positive rather than negative occur to you, include them. For example, you might think of a good world or a satisfying world. If such terms occur to you, use them along with the rest. You may not yet understand why these nice adjectives belong in the exercises, but remember that a good world implies a bad one and a satisfying world implies an unsatisfying one. All terms which cross your mind are suitable subjects for today's exercises. Their seeming quality does not matter. Be sure you do not alter the time intervals between applying today's idea to what you think is pleasant and what you think is unpleasant. For the purposes of these exercises, there is no difference between them. At the end of the practice period, add, but I am upset because I see a meaningless world. What is meaningless is neither good nor bad. Why then should a meaningless world upset you? If you could accept the world as meaningless and let the truth be written upon it for you, it would make you indescribably happy. But because it is meaningless, you are impelled to write upon it what you would have it be. It is this you see in it. It is this that is meaningless in truth. Beneath your words is written the word of God. The truth upsets you now, but when your words have been erased, you will see his. That is the ultimate purpose of these exercises. Three or four times is enough for practicing the idea today, nor should the practice periods uh, exceed a minute. You may find even this is too long. Terminate the exercises whenever you experience a sense of strain. Well, that's the end of that lesson. That's a good lesson. It's going to be a challenging lesson, I expect, for a lot of people. Um, The concepts in this lesson, though, that are being taught are really quite important, and I want to go back and just touch on them for a second. All terms which cross your mind are suitable for today's exercises, but realizing that their seeming quality doesn't matter. So 
when we bring these words like nice or good, there is an immediate implication that there is an opposite. So nice, there is a not nice. And good, there is a bad. And realizing that we are bringing that judgment to whatever it is, it's coming from us. Because if everything is a creation of God, if everything is a function of divinity, then there really can't be anything bad. Because if it's God, how can it be bad? So, difficult concepts. Just try and get our arms around. Thank you for joining me today. If you have comments or questions and would like to have a discussion, you can text me at 907-351-3003. And otherwise, I will see you next time for the next lesson. Thank you for joining me.